Okay, so this is a video I've wanted to make for a while now, ever since I, not started, which was like, you know, like half a week ago, but uh, it's just something that I wish was out there, or that I, I maybe I wish I didn't have to explain, like, uh, in, in, in group chats or anything, or it was just more of a trippy, tri trippy, tricky subject, or thing to talk about, like, over text, or it's just better to talk about with the person, or whatever, but we're going to be talking about, uh, I'm thinking of making this like a multi-part series, uh, but but first I want to set out a disclaimer. Number one, it's very hot in here, right? It is extremely hot in Hawaii where I am right now. Uh, like, look at that. It's like a hundred thousand million degrees hot. It's actually not that bad, but it's very hot. I don't have my AC on so that you can hear me. You all can hear me, and everything is okay. Um, but I'm thinking of making this multi series. Second disclaimer is that uh, I know I'm not the best draft battler. I, I, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm not ignorant to my own faults here. I, I'm just. I just know what I know, and I know that a lot of new players would probably like to know the same things that I do know. And this is going to be like my number one resource to hand them, even though there are probably better ones out there. But number one for this video, you saw the title. We're going to be talking about knowing your draft. Now, right, a lot of people go into their first draft and they don't know what's what's going on. Um, they don't know how to build, how to do anything. It's just kind of like they're just there, kind of try, kind of just vibing, trying to figure out what what's happening. And the first thing I wanted you to understand is, uh, first of all, knowing your league. Right, each league is going to have their own rules, um, whether it's points, tiers. A lot of teams are moving from tiers to points now, uh, which is pretty interesting to see. I think it was originally tiers or points then it went to tiers tiers is really popular and then from tiers it's going back to points now so most likely you're going to be dealing with points draft uh the way that works uh you're gonna to have to consult your own league's rules i'm not gonna be able to tell you that um all of this advice is gonna to have to work around your team your league's rules and what they do and do not allow uh for instance z moves nat decks i'm going to be speaking about uh I'm going to try to speak a little bit broader, but we are going to go into specifics for stuff I do know and am experienced with, right? Uh, so number one, we're going to be talking about, for this first first episode, we're going to be talking about, kind of, it's all unscripted, by the way, so if I stutter or mess up, it's just it's just part of the, part of the deal, unfortunately. But uh, a lot of people will set up their, or get, get ready to draft, they start they sit down to prep after understanding their roles, the tiers, the points, whatever, and they're gonna look at everything and they're gonna wonder where to start. Right? Do you start with the cores? Uh, what do you do? And that all of that actually really I, I think it really does depend on your team archetype. Right? So so here here's how we're gonna do this. There are a lot of different team archetypes in Pokemon, but especially Draft League because it's it's just a different meta. Like it's completely different in Draft League. And understanding that is a very big deal. And understanding how good they are in draft is a very big deal as well. Uh, for instance, let me see if I can pull out, like, uh, hold on. So, I, I, this isn't, like, I guess super fancy. Uh, this is very not fancy. So, there, here are four tiers, right? It's all impulse, so I don't really know what's going on here, but these are four tiers, right? Now, there are a lot of different archetypes in Draft League, and some work better than others. And right now, we're going to talk, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about what, from experience, from what I've seen people use, how it's been used, what, how I think these rank. And I think we're going to try to go from last to best here. And uh, this is not an, if you, maybe you're watching this with more experience and you say, hey, I've seen success with X archetype when you ranked it lower that's great for you but overall what's most user friendly what i suggest going into draft your first time um the cores i suggest you using what i what i think you should look for all that is going to be completely it, it, it could change and if i do turn my ac on i'm sorry but it's getting very hot um number one i think the worst uh archetype in draft is stall i think stall is very very bad in draft league format and there's a couple reasons why number one uh, stall is very slow. Uh, speed tiers is extremely important in draft, and it's part of what makes your team threatening, right? If I go over here to match up, and I go to um, speed, there aren't 
a lot of gaps to abuse. But my speed tiers go pretty systematically. But if we look at a team where there are big speed tier gaps, or this happens a lot on trick room teams because it's very, very hard to do. Let's look at uh, this team here. You'll see there's a lot of speed tier gaps. So it goes 130 to 159 uh, to, the rest is actually not that horrible, but you can see there's no 50 here. It goes from, and, and it goes from being kind of fast to slow, like 60 and below is pretty slow. And for that to be his fifth, his fifth fastest mod is an issue. Uh, it's a very similar thing you see in draft. You'll see like the fastest mod would be like 145 or one, like from anywhere from 115 to 145 and everything below that, uh, you've got like 80 down. And it's just your stall mods. That's that's a big issue for a few reasons. Number one, um, first of all, I want to say I'm a stall player on the ladder. I, I, I play a lot of stall. It, it's I enjoy playing it. It's I'm sick, but I know it. Um, the issue with stall, aside from that, is or, or the issue with your speed tiers being that gap, is that opponents faster mods can abuse that. Okay, so let's look at let's look at this team. Even though this is a trick room team. Um, Let's look at, okay, so see this right here. Berserker Tree is the issue. Okay, let's look at how many Mons. Right now, okay, okay, so here's here's the thing. We have three Mons here that can abuse this speed. Even this one. They can, and by abuse I say run, run Adamant, right? So three Mons here can run Adamant. Crocodile can run Adamant to catch 60 below. Gujo can run Modest to catch 60 below because these are most likely going to be defensive, which means they don't run speed. So a lot of the slower mons can just run a little bit of speed to out tech or, or, or whatever, right? But because you're so slow, um, it, it, it's going to increase the ability for the opponent to put pressure on. And uh, that really rounds up to the main issue with Stall, but we'll get to that later. Uh, number two is going to be everything set up fodder. Right, it, 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 literally everything set up fodder except for like one mon and that one mon is going to be easily dealt with if the, the opponent does it right taunts a huge issue uh, faster taunters like cook it out in this game if this was a stall team it'd be a very very bad deal for him and uh, again the speed tier gaps are, speed tiers are extremely important in draft i used to think they weren't very important but they are they, they're extremely important because you're not going to be dealing with jolly threats right on the ladder you can you can match up against a jolly threat and maybe you take three but in draft they're going to know what's coming they're going to make it adamant they're going to speed keep correctly they're going to do everything right and it's going to be very hard for you to fight back um so stall is in my opinion the worst one of the worst i'll say one of the worst play styles in the game in in draft league um yeah so we go over we went over speed tiers we went over what was the second thing set up fodder um what else did we go over? Was that it? Uh, they kind of it kind of rounds back. I think that's it. It kind of rounds back to predictability, right? The opponent knows what you're bringing, right? If I was facing, um, you know, Skarm Bliss, right, and and, and say Skarm Re was like the second fastest thing, it's easy for me to beat because I can taunt. I can put taunt on this. I can do this to that. I know stall is coming on the ladder. In tournaments, you don't always inherently know stall is coming. You have to prep for everything. But in this in this counter team format, you know exactly what's coming, exactly what your opponent has. They can obviously mess around with certain sets for certain mods. But if you're playing a Chansey, the Chansey's not running specs. The Chansey's not running band. It's running a Violite. It's running defensive, right? Whether that's Toxic Wish, a Side of Toss, Stealth Rocks, uh, Heal Bell, whatever. It's defensive. So there's a certain limit to what mods can do. And it's, it's not to be trifled with, and I think it's very bad to put your team in a situation where you're very, very trapped into one play style and one thing because it becomes predictable, it becomes easy to build around, it, it, it becomes abusable with the speed tiers, with nature, is all of that. Um, and it's just not a good place to be in for your first draft. If maybe you're experienced and you want to try out stall, hey, maybe you're watching this and you've had success with stall, whatever, that's good for you. But I think very it's, very, it's not user-friendly at all. Uh, especially for newer players um, And I just don't think it's very good overall even for more experienced players I think you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck going for one of the better higher up ranked things um, What else what's next in the D tier what else don't I like here also, I'm not gonna be covering uh, Teams with a lack of synergy. That's just a stupid thing to do These are team archetypes. So we're gonna assume that you have the essential 
thing. So stall, we're gonna assume you got the chance, you got the Mega Stabilize, or you got the Blissey, or you got whatever, right? We're gonna assume you have those pieces and you need those pieces. And another thing is stall is pretty hard to build. Um, you're gonna have to get to lower tier your Stallmons, uh, especially if you don't have a, a, as great as a pick. You have, you get risk of being sniped, and then you have lower tier walls, and it's, it's just it's just an issue. If, if that's another thing, right? Uh, D. Another thing I really don't like is hyper offense. Uh, I'm just I, it's a very similar along the same lines. The opponent knows what's coming, but in this case, I, I think that stall or hyper offense. We're gonna fix that really fast, actually. Um, hyper offense is better than stall because hyper offense you at least have uh, the ability to make big, bigger bang plays, and you can play offensively. You can keep momentum. You can keep things moving in your favor. Um, there, there are mons, certain mons like right, right here. Alakazam is excellent one with magic card. Uh, Focus Sash is another big friend of yours. Taunt's not as big of an issue, but it does get stopped if played around correctly, right? I mean, hyper offense is extremely risk reward. Uh, you make one bad play, you could just lose the game, right? And it's just it, it, it requires perfect play. And when the opponent knows it's coming. It's not easy, but like you could slap an assault vest on something, or you know whatever you want, burn, webs. It, it's just there's a lot of ways to slow down and hinder something that you know is coming, right? If you know hyper offense is coming, uh, it's a lot easier to build. If you know what's coming, it's a lot easier to build. Lack of versatility is very hard to build with, play with, battle with in draft league format. Hyper offense is better than stall simply for the reason in my in my eyes that it can keep the opponent on the back foot it can work it can be that whole thing where like you know it's coming but you can't stop us type of thing and uh that's why i rank it higher uh number three or for for i think that's all it's going to go in the last tier i can't think of any this is all off the cuff none of the scripted i don't have any notes i have nothing written down um next i'm going to put here here's what we're gonna do we're gonna put sun We're gonna put Sun for now. Sun's not as good, number one. Uh, no. I'm thinking of just doing it now. Uh, where'd the notepad go? We're gonna be doing a li little bit, a little bit of deliberation here. Let me, as I turn my music down. Okay, there we go. That's not as good, but whatever. So the issue I have with the weather, um, very similar to, um, very similar to stalling hyper offense, you know what's coming. Uh, weather, I think, in this generation has gotten a little bit better, specifically sand and, or specifically rain. Rain has gotten really good, um, and I think it's a lot easier to play around with, but the issue I have with it is, it's, it's very, it's very, First of all, it's very mon dependent. It's very dependent that for sand you have your Excadrill. Uh, it's very dependent that you have your you have Powdown or you have your Tyranitar or you have your whatever you're, you're playing with. Uh, for rain, it's very important you have the Pelipper, but now that uh, Polito is obviously a huge deal. Uh, sun, you need the Torkoal or the Ninetales. Torkoal is just better because it sets rocks, it spins. Ninetales is uh, kind of just a waste. It can't hold the damn. It can't hold the rock as much. Um, and there's only certain setters, right? I'm not gonna even talk about Hail. Hail is just a lowland nine tails on a team. It's probably it's but a lowland nine tails on hyper offense actually is very good. I think it, it, um, in draft league, I think it definitely can win. Uh, but again, it's just predictable. It's just it just it just really is. Um, I think I'm just gonna put all the weathers in C tier. Do I just put all the weathers in C tier? I think rain rain is definitely the best. Um, the addition of Dragovish, the addition of um, what was uh, the King Drug King Drug getting Hurricane, Urshifu Water. Uh, obviously not going to get all on the same team, but it's all very 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 crucial for rain. Uh, it's very good for rain. Two different weather setters is a big deal, especially when they're not Nine Tails. Uh, Polytoad has its own thing with Whirlpool Parasol. It can it can do its thing. It can toxic this that. It holds the damn proc very well. Pelipper is always the best, but it uh, Polito definitely can get the job done. So can Ninetales, but you're just wasting 
you're just waste honestly if you're just wasting uh, points or your tier 3 usually it's in tier 3 or whatever points it's obviously it's usually gonna be placed higher than uh, Torkoal so it's just not good um, sand sands definitely the second best Sun is last and I'm not gonna even talk about hail because it's it's just Veil at that point, Veil Hyper Offense. Uh, reason, we kind of talked about it for a little bit, but um, Rain, Sun, Sand, very not user friendly unless you are an absolute beast on the ladder or you've or you've you know done this before. But first time going in, it's very ha hard to draft, draft a stall team. Most stall teams, you're gonna have Excadrill, you're gonna have, I don't know, like Hip Howdon. Um, it has a lot of common weaknesses, which isn't necessarily always bad. Um, you're gonna have something to remove waters or you know whatever you're gonna have your grass type it's just it's just very hard to do um, you're gonna have mega like this th this is actually interesting because you can now you can take mega T-tar and you can save your tier 2 or you can just get regular T-tar uh, your mega is very important uh, usually you're not rock speak which is a big deal but it's just predictable. You know what's coming. You can take away the sun. Um, you can take away this. You can take away your weather setter, the opponent's weather setter, and then they have an issue, right? That's the main reason I'm gonna put that there. Um, the reason it's above stall. Stall is very obvious. Stall is horrible. The reason it's above hyper offense, especially veil hyper offense, is that it does have uh, its options, right? Uh, water, especially now, has flip turn, which is a huge deal. Um, Sand is just sand's always been good with drill. Drill's excellent abuser of sand. Uh, and sun is very powerful with Mega Venus or Chlorophyll with uh, naturally boosting. That's another thing. Naturally boosting uh, your moves, which hail actually doesn't get. Hail doesn't get a multiplier from just being in hail, but sun and rain do. Naturally boosting the type the power of an attack inside that weather is a big deal, um, which makes it capable to perform hyper offense you can still get good good defensive mons to set stuff and whatever um and we're gonna pause really fast okay sorry about that I had, I had to fix something really fast but now we have the ac on number one because it's gonna get loud outside number two i'm sweating and everything is getting wet on my desk so um what, what, what was i talking about okay yeah sun rain and sand so they're they're just predictable Right, they're easy. They're, they, you know what's coming. The, the thing about them, which make them deadly, you might be saying, hey, I I took, you know, I won a league with whatever, and, uh, or I saw my friend, he won a league with Rain and whatever, and that's great, right? That's that's very good, and it's, if you know how to use it, it every, every set, every style can work, just to put that out there. Is weather the most user-friendly when you're new to draft? Absolutely not. Can you win with it? Yes, of course you can. It can be the champion of the league, it can be the kill leader, Swapper can be the kill leader, King Joe can be the kill leader, but you know, whatever. It, it's all possible, you can all win with it. Um, but if we're talking what's best for starting out, um, what style should I use, which ones are better, in my opinion, the weathers aren't that great. They're good, but they're they're okay. They're they're fine. That's why they're in C tier. They're not bad like stall, but they're not as good as the stuff above, right? So that's what we have there. Number number next. Let's just replace this with other. Um, next, we're gonna have Trick Room. Trick Room, not user friendly to start with, um, just because it's a very difficult play style. You're gonna, you, you, the, it now it's easier, kind of I guess, with Trick Room Teleport. A lot of ones have have Trick Room Teleport. Um, if we look at Trick Room and Teleport together. There are a few mods that get it, and you're gonna have not down here, but you're gonna have some options. Some of these are in different tiers, lower tiers. Mew is a very good one, uh, but it's it's there's there's there are options, right? But the issue is trick room. No matter what, it lasts four turns, right? You're gonna you you get it, you, you set up trick room, and you teleport out. That's two turns, so you're on turn three. By the time you get another mod in, you got like two three turns. Okay, the opponent has to protect for one of the turns. Or better yet, he uses taunt and you don't get to set it up at all, at all, right? Taunt, taunt plus uh, like setup mods is a very big deal against uh, a very big problem for Trick Room. Uh, speed tiers, same thing, same issue as 
Um, uh, what was I saying? I think I missed you a stall. Actually, actually, you know what? Let's fix this. I think hyper offense. Not always. I'd say hyper offense and trick room is about the same. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm I'm confident in this this ranking here. They belong in the same tier for sure. Um. Yeah, very similar things to stall actually. Uh, we should we use the trick room as like a. Uh, as an example, um, yeah, as an example, we used the salt team earlier, or the uh, trick room team from earlier, and we're gonna just take it, we're gonna go a little bit deeper into its issues really quickly. We talked about number one, the speed tiers, right? Number two, predictability, right? Very predictable when you, this is, it, it, this team got a, lot, a little better, but it was hard trick room. Like, it, it, it just was trick room, and there's nothing you can do about it. Like, there's crawled on here, there, there's a couple other things that, just made it hard trick room, which made it predictable, which meant taunt was a big issue. Uh, right here, this this speed tier gap, very big deal. This speed tier gap, very big deal. And how the rest of this kind of bunched up and how you're not running speed investment on these mods is a very big deal. Uh, especially when taunt is such a big issue for trick room, uh, for stall. That's part of the issue. That's, that's, that, that's something that you share in common is the weakness of taunt. Um, the, it can be easily abused with natures. Natures can be very easily abused here. You can run the uh, boosting attack nature, which you can too, but it's more of a big deal if it's shutting down your Porygon. If you, you know, if the Adamant 2 hit KO'd your Porygon, that's a huge deal. If the Adamant Immodest 2 hit KO'd the Porygon. Um, on top of that, the speed tiers it does have. Crobat is excellent speed tier. 130 is very good. Um, Drapion, not very good. Uh, from well not Drapion not very good right here. If Drapion was more like the fourth, fifth, or the third, fourth fastest Pokemon, then we would have a different story here. But the speed tiers are gapped here, which is an issue. This is cluttered. These two speed tiers are cluttered, which is annoying. Uh, and Trick Room is just very hard to pull off overall. It's it's very difficult, especially hard Trick Room. If you have soft Trick Room, I don't know if that's what it's called, but if you have light Trick Room, uh, and you say you run only like a few trick room bonds but the rest of your team is kind of balanced that's a little better in my opinion uh because then everything is going to be not balanced out but there's going to be more versatility there's more threats there there's more there's more you have to make that that's that's a good way to put it you need to make your opponent work hard in prep to beat you right if your opponent is not working hard in prep to beat you then they have a significant advantage during the battle. The battle only is like, I, I, I say the battle is only 30% of how the week goes for you. The prep, the uh, the practice rounds, but all of that, that's all much more important than the actual battle. In, in my opinion, um, but yeah, that's the issue with Trick Room. Uh, what other archetypes are there that we could cover? I obviously know the, the big ones, the ones I want to place up in A and B. Should we have an S tier? No, we're not gonna have an S tier because I mean, no, we're not gonna have an S tier. Um, I'm gonna put. Mm, I'm gonna put. Uh, hold on. Um, let's put, uh, defensively, so, so this is a lot here, um, I, I, I myself always, not always, but I, I very often go to defensively biased teams. The issue with defensively biased teams, uh, predictability is kind of the issue, but if we're talking defensively biased as opposed to like stall or mega defensive, is that you have your speed tiers, you do have offensive threats, um, you have offensive options, and you have versatile options, right? So um, that that's, that's what I'm talking about here. Right. Well, obviously, we're talking about well-built teams of each archetype. So we're talking about a, 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 a well-built Spotsall, a well-built Weather, a well-built 
built Trick Room, a well-built Hyper Offense team, and obviously at least moderately well-built these teams. Uh, we're going to talk about how to build them. We're not going to talk about, we're not going to put as much emphasis on the lower ones as we do the higher ones, but we're definitely, they might all get their own episode and I might bring guests on and to talk about it and whatever. But for now, this is what we have. I, I often stick with the defensively biased, the defensively biased teams that, um, myself, to be honest with you. Um, and by defensively biased, I don't mean or defensively and offensively biased. I don't mean the mon. I don't mean the mons themselves. I mean the team as a whole. So the team as a whole has a lot of defensive mons with, say, two to three offensive mons, right? With a lower tier, say, four offensive mons. One of them being lower tier, maybe one of them being able to go offensively or defensively effective. Same thing with defensive, uh, with offensively biased. You have two to three to four walls. One of them being able to go offensively both ways. Um, reason I say defensively biased is a little bit better is number one I've used the most uh, this is where I think a little bit of my personal bias will come into play but not that much I think defensively biased is definitely safer it's a safer option uh, especially for newer players um, unless maybe hey maybe you do play hyper offense on the leaderboard and you don't want to go hyper offense for your first draft league and you want it you do want to go offensively biased then you know float your boat you do you do you do what you do what suits you that's another thing I have to stress here is you have to do what suits your play style and your experience the best, right? And obviously you could take any experience through Pokemon and some of it will correlate to draft, right? It's not going to be like a completely new thing. If you're trying to figure out type matchups or speed tiers or whatever, you take what you know and apply what you know about yourself and how you play to draft league and you'll be fine. Um, but defensively biased, I do see as safer overall because of um, being able to wall things. Yeah. Assuming you have good mons to abuse scarps and good offensive threats to revenge kill or to not be at complete risk of being of everything being set up fodder. Uh, honestly, these three can go either way. Defensively bias could be at the bottom. Offensively bias could be in the front. All of that. Um, balance. Balance is kind of funny. I think it could definitely go in A tier. Uh, I think it could share... Okay. Oh, I'm. I, I. I. know what we're gonna do. We are gonna add an S tier. S tier. A tier. Balance. I do think is a little bit better. Um, than offensively or defensively biased teams, for a couple reasons. Number one, um, usually you demand higher caliber mons of each side on biased teams. So what I mean by that is number you're gonna need good walls to be called defensively biased but you're also going to need good offensive bonds to keep yourself as a defense as an offensively capable team uh opposite holds true for offensively biased teams you're going to need high caliber offensive bonds and also good mods on the defensive backbone to be considered defensive and not hyper offense this is going to make it difficult in drafting and in trades or matchups to deal with because um it's very hard to get high caliber of both sides Balance, on the other hand, you can get away with running lower tier wall here, uh, lower offensive mon here, because overall the team works in balance and harmony. Balance has a couple issues though, uh, specifically with teams that go extreme in one direction. This means hyper balance. Same thing on the ladder, right? If you're facing stall with a balanced team, it's difficult to beat. Um, here in draft league, however. Not as much because you can front on you, you have you know what's coming but hyper offense more specifically is a problem the more i talk about it the more i want to yeah, the, yeah let's just do that i know this is going to be a little bit weird but let's do that instead uh hyper offense is an issue because it overwhelms whatever front you don't have a mastery in so defensively biased teams can take on a hyper offense team for the most part so can a balanced team, but it's just going to have a lot of a hard time, and it's more susceptible to being overwhelmed by any one thing, right? So say, uh, pretend that's the same thing as, uh, I don't know, like, uh, say, you're, say you're making cookies, right? Say you're making cookies, and instead of like making ball cookies, you make one ball of a cookie extremely thin, okay? It, it cooks quicker. This is stupid. But 
I think you're understanding what I'm saying, though. It, it, it's spread thin. Your defenses are spread thinner against something that is meant to destroy defenses, and your offense is spread thinner against something that is meant to hold back offensive mons. Um, this can be easily played around. Um, balance plays well around everything because it's the most versatile, and if you can get versatile mons, that's a very big deal. Uh, balance, I think, in draft league specifically, especially, thrives off having versatile offensive minds. By that, I mean things like Infernape, Necrozma, stuff that can go offensively, physically, or especially Latias, um, all those minds that can go either way, add an extra layer of diversity to your team that is very hard to deal, deal with, uh, with when fighting a well-put-together, well-prepped for balanced team. And I think it's very user-friendly. Um, like, what you don't have to worry about uh, losing your weather setter or, you know, making one bad play and messing up with hyper offense. Um, or, you know, being overly predictive to stall. These two kind of have their own thing. But balance can deal with everything to a well to a good extent. Finally, S tier. Um, this is... Are that high spell offense? That's not high spell offense. I went to school, I promise, but it's, I'm, I'm very tired. Um, let's just go with that. That's fine. We're, we're not, we don't have too much time anyway, so let's do that. Bulky offense is arguably the best, the best archetype, both outside and inside of draft. Um, the reason being is it, the way... It, okay, here, first, let's talk about how it differs from balance. Number one, it differs from balance because the mons themselves do not work together to bring a balance score. They work together to bring a bulky offensive team. Okay, so this means the individual mons on the bulky offense team are bulkily offensive or catered to that playstyle. I'm talking things like Rotom Wash. Uh, here, let's just let's look here. Rotom Wash, mons that are offensive but bulky. Uh, we're talking your Tapu Bulus. You're talk. We're talking, um, you know, Volcarona to an extent. Aegislash, Conkeldur, Diggersby. These mons that are offensively bulky they can take a couple hits and they also have good walls Rotom wash is an excellent wall in draft format defog all of that that's how that that this is in my opinion the draft team archetype tier list right bulky offense at the top stall at the bottom uh bulky offense assuming you have good speed tiers everything works out is the most user friendly is the best one in my opinion it's also the hardest one to also draft to pick up because they're Tier restrictions, there's point restrictions. It's hard to do, but if you can get it, it's extremely user friendly. Um, yeah, is that it? I don't know how much. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cover D and C tier alone by ourselves, I think, and we're not gonna talk about it too much. And I want to get maybe these will have their own videos. Um, but yes, this is in my opinion the tier list and. Again, disclaimer, all these can work. You can win a league with stall. You can win a league with weather. You can, you obviously very well can win a league with weather, hyper offense, or trick room. It's just a lot harder when you're first getting into draft. Um, it's even harder when you're more experienced because you're locked into things that are predictable. You, versatility is the name of the game of draft league. If you're not versatile, you're going to have a hard time against other teams. So let's talk about... Say, say you do. For the rest of the video, we're only going to be talking about stall. Um weather and we're, we're going to touch on hyper offense and trick room it's kind of we're only going to touch on stall hyper and trick room right so assuming you have the 11 mon maximum for stall you're going to want to get your um mega stabilize you're going to want to get your chancy uh you're going to want to get the mons of these sort right but you're also going to get want one you're going to want one High caliber, high caliber, fast offensive mind. This is your Dragapult. Um, this is your Cinderace. This is your uh, your your Mew. This is your Urshifu. This is your Zero Aura. For that speed control, that 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 top dog speed tier, right? Usually, Sableye, you're getting some points back for free picks, which is a very big deal if you want to go over two tier ones or whatever. But that's what you're gonna want to do, and you're gonna want to cater to that. So the reason I can't make how to draft. Is because there's no one way. There's no one way to draft because there are so many different archetypes, right? Like we just covered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different archetypes. So you have to build and you have to draft accordingly, depending on which one, right? Uh, stall, I, I think, 
uh, especially you need to abuse lower tiers. Um, lower, by lower tiers I mean value mons, mons that you don't believe belong in the lower tiers. Um, say I'm playing balance and I see pile of swine tier five. That mon's too good in my opinion to be in tier five. I take that mon. Um, you know, say round six, seven before people can get to it. I focus on the value that what is in my eyes valuable in that tier. This is this is good across every single, um, every every single variant of every single different archetype. So stall is very self-explanatory. We're not going to cover it as much because it's not as user friendly. It's not as good. Um, Hyper offense. I'm not even a type in mon. You got your Alex Sam Dragapult. Uh, you want one to two like pivots. So this is your Magna Zone. Uh, Mew is very good here because it can do a lot, but it's going to be forced defensively, which isn't a big deal, but it's kind of annoying. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. I'm not going to cover. Yeah, like I said, I'm not going to cover these bottom ones too much, but maybe we'll have their, our own videos for the other the other four. Uh, weather. Very simple. Um, you want your drizzle setter. You want your um, swift swim abusers. So you have that. There's actually a lot. There's quite a bit actually. Yeah, uh, especially if we're talking uh, national decks, which is what most teams are doing. <coughs> uh, Bear scoot is a big one, uh, and you also want things that abuse the brain. Right, like I said, naturally getting the boost. So Keldeo, Urshifu, Dracovish, all those are good mons. Fire Thorn is very good because uh, the rain helps the fire. Fire weakness, Scissor is very good. Um, Beginner is not never going to be allowed, but if it is, pick it up first round. You can build an excellent rain team around that. If you can't get Mega Swampert, Mega Scissor is another excellent mega, and get make sure you get your Barracuda, make sure you get uh, your other things. A Thunder Abuser is very important. Uh, Zapdos is very good now because they got Hurricane and Thunder. Which is both get the hundred percent. They have they bypass accuracy check in the rain. I don't know if that's true, but it's hundred percent accurate. Uh, Greninja, very good tier three at that point. Uh, that stuff, right? You want that? You want your value? If maybe you don't want to spend this much, this much on your uh, your tier two or whatever, tier one or the thirteen points or whatever it is, you can take Polytoad for five points for tier five for tier four or whatever. <coughs> and you have more um, higher tier options, right? But uh, for Sun, you have two options, really two good options, two two legal options. Number one, Mega Charizard Meg uh, Y. Never draft that if you're drafting Sun. It's horrible. You can't add boots to it. Um, it's just it's just it's just awful by every single standard. Your two options are Nine Tails and Torkoal. Nine Tails is almost all or Torkoal is almost always cheaper. Um, Rest, not the best form of recovery, but it's there. Body Press, he got this generation. Uh, Rapid Spin, Stealth Rock, much better mon. It holds the item much better. Um, and it abuses Sun more to the extent that it does a defensive role, but it also can perform offensively with Sun up. Um, you're going to want your Chlorophyll Abusers. Uh, I don't know how to spell Chlorophyll. CH. Yep, CH. Well, that's cool. Uh, these are. This, it's hard because there aren't too many good chlorophyll abusers. There's Venusaur. Um, there's Shiftry, Leafeon, but it, it, it's limited, right? But then you want more, more fire types, Cinderace, um, all of that stuff, right? But make sure you're also building. Most times, weather teams will get locked into weather, as in, like, all the mons do something for weather. Like, uh, if you're playing rain, you're going to have a Gudra there, because the Gudra has hydration, all of that. Not always the best. Um, you want you want to have things that work can function kind of both inside and outside, but you do want to be a sun team, right? You do want to be a rain team. You do want to be a sand team. You don't want to be uh, a team that's kind of put together plus sand core. Not, it's, it's, it's not, that's not how it works. I mean, it, it can work, but it's just not as well synergize is having a mainly sand team with stuff that functions outside of sand or sun or rain that stuff right sand uh i forget what it's called sand rush no what's it called what's the ability called sand stream 
Um, so right here, you have your you have a lot of good options actually. Gigalith is very good, cheap option. Hippowdon is very good option. Tyranitar is excellent option. And for your Mega, Mega Titar is a very good option. Although it, it, it has a struggle playing defensive roles if you want that, but it can go D dance offensive. It can go Swords dance offensive. It can wall break. You know whatever you want. Uh, Titar is the most versatile in my opinion. Assault vest, uh, banded. Uh, I guess scarf if you wanted to pursuit. Very big. Uh, Hippowdon is good for tier two. Gigalith is excellent tier four for sand. You're gonna want to pick up Excadrill, obviously. Uh, if your t if your league is allowing it, then Dracozolt's a big deal. Sand, Rush, is a big deal. Lycanroc's a big deal. Stoutland is a very good tier four, and obviously you're gonna want your stuff that functions outside of Sand as well, or somehow benefit in a different way from Sand. Um, by that I mean a Magic Gardmon, uh, Sage Lift, something, something to defog rocks away. So you don't feel like you need to run uh, rapid spin on your drill, that stuff. Um, trick room. We're actually gonna take a look at Nox team because it's actually a pretty good trick room team. Uh, your speed tiers are gonna be very hard, so don't worry about those too much. But it's part of the weaknesses, right? But here you have trick room setters one. I think it only has two. One, one, two, three. Three trick room setters. All of them with teleport, which is very cool. Um, good trick room abusers. This is this is also a big deal. So having mons that abuse trick room on differently, especially offensive or different offensive fronts, is a big deal. You can see here, camera up and executor go specially. Uh, metal metal, Alolan, Marowak go physically, which means you can't have all your you, your opponent can't be all bold, and your opponent can't be all calm right you gotta have some variety uh again don't lock yourself in a hard trick room your first time it's very hard to do you want stuff that functions both in and outside of trick room same thing with feathers same thing with hyper offense uh same thing with hopefully stall but it's just very hard to do um the music just stop well with that that is a 40 minute 42 minute video but here is the final, my final tier list for team archetypes in draft league format. I'm sorry for turning the AC on, but everything was sweaty and it was not fun. Uh, with that, God bless, goodbye, and see you next time.